Medical Specialists Associates, making medical education more accessible. Hi, my name is Christopher Vescopoulos of Medical Specialists Associates and the Anesthesiology Liaison to the Trauma Committee here at Lawrence General Hospital in Massachusetts. In this particular video, I'd like to walk you through how to do a percutaneous cricothyroidotomy. I will break this procedure up into four distinct steps, and in each of the sections, they'll be somewhat repetitive on purpose to emphasize important points in the procedure. In the first section, I'll review with you the anatomy, as well as suggesting that you draw the anatomy on patients if time allows to help you orientate yourself during the procedure. I'll also show you how to use ultrasound to help guide success of the procedure as well. In the second portion, I'll review with you the equipment that is needed in detail. In the third section, I'll demonstrate for you the procedure with the use of a mannequin. And in the fourth section, I'll demonstrate for you how to do the procedure with the use of a pig trachea. Thank you for learning with me. So let's jump straight into it. So the first thing I want to mention here is that the indications for this procedure are generally that you have an inability to intubate a patient from the oral or nasal route, basically anything via a supraglottic approach. And this is usually secondary to failed uh, attempts, um, or it could be prohibitory to even try. Say if an individual presents with major facial traumas uh, in the emergency department, you might not feasibly be able to try any supraglottic approach. So you might be forced into the cricothyroidotomy rather early. So for this particular demonstration, I'm gonna do it with the Cook Medical Cuffed Emergency Cricothyroidotomy catheter set. And there's some additional equipment that I'll use and I, I list it over here. Uh, I'll talk about a right angle, uh, forceps, an 11 blade as compared to the 15 blade that comes in the set, a normal saline and a surgical marker. On this particular slide here, I demonstrate some of the equipment. Um, I'll point out numerous times here that the 11 blade here is a pencil tip needle and I'll explain why that is important. Um, but since I spent so much time in this in detail in the next section, I will wait to do it then. Here, I want to emphasize drawing the anatomy on a patient. Now, for my percutaneous tracheostomies, I draw the anatomy on all of my patients. It helps me to orientate myself to the anatomy of the patient uh, when the surgical procedure uh, begins, and uh, I believe it helps me to have a much higher success rate uh, in my procedures. Now, of course, a percutaneous cricothyroidotomy could be more of an emergency procedure, and perhaps maybe you don't have time, but oftentimes you do. Um, and there are many situations where the patient's able to be bag masked, or perhaps maybe you put an LMA in as a temporary device to where you might have a few extra seconds and you can consider this. And so here I show the thyroid cartilage and then the cricoid cartilage down here and then in between the cricothyroid membrane. And just out of habit for myself, I tend to draw these lines across the cricothyroid membrane um, so it's distinct to me when I do my procedure. And here now is the use of ultrasound. So I also use ultrasound for my procedures, again, if time permits, but it often does. And it certainly does for all of my percutaneous tracheostomies again. But here is what the ultrasound would look like to do a cricothyroidotomy uh, procedure in an in-plane fashion. And so here you can see the thyroid cartilage, here you can see the cricothyroid membrane, here you can see the cricoid cartilage, and then the substance tracheal rings. And in this particular technique, contingent upon how big your probe is, again, you would need a small probe um, to be able to fit everything you know, on the patient and to do the procedure as such, but you can come straight in here with your needle and see it passing straight through the cricothyroid membrane, which is often how I prefer doing it. Now, this is with an in-plane approach. Now, oftentimes many of us are much more familiar with an out-of-plane approach, say when we're doing our central lines uh, or arterial lines, where this is the image that we most commonly see. But again, you can use ultrasound here to just at least identify what the uh, midline is. And this is very, very useful as one of the common complications in the cricothyroidotomy is a false passage. And how do we get a false passage? Well, we get a false passage when we pass the needle either to the left you know, or to the right of the patient. And by just simply putting a probe on, which could take seconds, you can see midline very well and you can dramatically improve your success of getting the needle in on a first attempt and avoiding a false passage. 
so I'm uh, Christopher Viscopoulos, and thanks for joining me here for how to do a percutaneous cricothyroidotomy. The kit here I'm using is the uh, Cuff Emergency Cricothyroidotomy catheter set from Cook Medical, and I have a five millimeter uh, internal diameter. And I want to go over what is um, present in this particular kit um, and some other auxiliary equipment uh, that we use. So the first thing I want to note here is that we have a 6 ml syringe that comes with the kit and we have two size needles here. So depending on the individual's body habitus and how much distance they might have and how much subcutaneous tissue they have, you can choose an appropriate length uh, size needle. Um, if you would like, um, one additional thing that you can do is you can put some saline um, into the syringe. Again, this is uh, optional. And the reason why uh, I tend to put uh, saline into the syringe, again, if, if time allows, is because when I first have entry into the patient's cricothyroidotomy and then into uh, the trachea, when I pull back, I can see air bubbles uh, coming out um, through, uh, through the water. And it's just an additional confirmation measure that makes me feel a little more comfortable. So the technique I'm gonna show you here is entry of the needle first. Um, and so I'm putting my needle in um, and that's the first step I do. I get confirmation um, air uh, in the syringe. And then the next step is I'm going to insert my catheter. And so the catheter comes housed in this particular uh, casing here and I take it out. And it's important to know um, what is the entry uh, position of the catheter. Um, this particular catheter, the flexible tip is what goes into the bronchial tree. And that's important because the other end is, rig is rigid. So when we do have our needle um, in our patient and we're passing the wire through and the wire goes into the bron uh, bronchial tree, eventually at some point in time, we're gonna reach a terminal portion of the bronchial tree. And since this is flexible, this provides for additional safety so that you can't puncture the bronchial tree and cause injury uh, distal. And so now what we have is we have a percutaneous approach to where we've entered our needle and now we have our uh, wire in the individual. And now we have to look to extend an, ex uh, an incision. So what comes in the kit here is a 15 blade. And I tend not to prefer a 15 blade for this particular procedure because since I had a percutaneous approach first with just the wire in, if I had a 11 blade, the difference being that an 11 blade is a pencil tip um, as compared to a 15 blade, which is rounded, a pencil tip more easily allows me to come right down onto the wire and extend an excision down in either direction. So I'm approximately gonna put maybe at about a, a centimeter um, incision. So maybe 0.5 centimeters towards me, um, uh, towards the right and then towards the left. And in this particular approach, I'm putting a horizontal incision and not a vertical um, incision. And so after I have uh, made my uh, cut, Depending on the individual's body habitus, this is usually not needed, but it could be, we could possibly have use for a right angle. And so what a right angle can do here is an individual has a lot of subcutaneous tissue, we can come down here on the wire and we can blunt dissect down. Now, this often again isn't necessary because the carcothyroidotomy membrane is usually very well anterior um, and there's usually not a lot of uh, soft tissue there. Um, and again, this would be needed in someone who's maybe of a smaller body habitus as well. Um, so now, once we have our wire in, now we're gonna proceed toward advancing our device. And our device for the entry aspect of it is in two separate uh, components. One is gonna be an inner rigid dilator, and it's tapered here to go over the wire, then tapered to go into the individual. And this goes over our airway uh, apparatus and goes into the apparatus right here. And it's important that this becomes flush because you want this to be a smooth taper into the individual. And so now here, um, as you can imagine, we have our wire um, in the individual and we're gonna hold this in such a way to where we have some control over the inner dilator so it doesn't come out of the back. And then we advance our airway device um, over the wire and then into the patient. However, it's not just that simple. What we want to do is we want to pay particular attention to what is the angle of the wire. And what I want to do is I want to go over the angle of the wire smoothly in the individual, into the individual. So why do I say it like that? 
Because what I have seen is, is let's say if we have our wire going straight down here, individuals tend sometimes maybe to not follow the angle of the wire and they go off axis. And when they go off axis, they could bend the wire. And then when the wire is bent, that could actually be prohibitory uh, for the procedure uh, to be completed. And so we follow the path of the wire um, into the individual. Now we are in, and then we take out our inner dilator. So here we are, and I want to first demonstrate how to do this on a mannequin before we turn to a uh, pig model. And what you'll notice here is that what I did is, is I drew the anatomy. So oftentimes this will take just a few seconds, and we'll draw here the thyroid cartilage, we'll draw here the cricoid uh, cartilage, and then I have here with lines across the cricothyroid membrane. So again, since this is a you know, often um, less done uh, procedure, I find that having some anatomy here uh, drawn out helps to orientate an individual as to the steps of the procedure for a higher rate of success. And so with that anatomy uh, drawn out, we'll take our 6 ml syringe, Oftentimes, if you have time, you can put a little water uh, again into the syringe. And then we have our needle. We'll hold counter tension uh, with our opposite hand to where we're securing um, uh, the carcathoid uh, uh, membrane with this hand. And we'll go down. And as we're going down, we're pulling back with our syringe and we're looking for air bubbles. And so once we have entry into the airway, it's important to stop right there because at this junction, we have to start thinking about complications. And one of the complications that we could have is that we could advance the needle too far and go through the posterior tracheal wall and then into the esophagus, which is what we don't want to do. And so once we have air bubbles, we stop. I often secure the palm of my hand uh, on the patient in some way, shape, or form so that my hand is secure and uh, my needle will not move. And so the next then I'm going to grab for my wire and again, there are two um, uh, parts of this particular wire, the entry part, which is flexible, and then the posterior part here, which is not. And we want the flexible portion here to go into the patient first. Again, because it's flexible as it advances down the bronchial tree, when it reaches a terminal portion of the bronchial tree, the flexible tip will prevent entry. And so now we have our wire in the individual. Now again, the kit comes with a 15 blade, but again, that 15 blade is curved. And so what I tend to want to use instead is an 11 blade, which is a pencil tip needle. And that is because now I can have the, uh, the scalpel come straight down on the wire, and then I can extend a horizontal incision, approximately 0.5 centimeters to the left, 0.5 centimeters uh, to the right, in individuals that might have an excessively big um, body habitus, you might want to do some soft tissue dissection before you put your entry device in. And to that end, it could be helpful to have a right angle. Here you can then come down into your incision and just gently blunt dissect. Often again, this is not needed, especially in uh, thinner individuals. And then the next step here is that we would take our airway device. And this is, again, two devices uh, in one. This is our inner dilator with our airway device here and the wires uh, in the individual. And again, an important part of this particular step here is to follow the path of the wire coming down. And we want to follow that path of the wire coming down, entry into the, into the, into the individual, because if we don't, what we can do is we could inadvertently bend the wire. And if we have gotten all these steps through and we bend the wire, it could be prohibitory to complete the procedure because we might not be able to get the wire through uh, if it's bent. And that's why we want to spend extra attention to just following the path of the wire so there's a smooth entry in. And so once we're in here, we can take out both the wire and the inner dilator together. And then we'll hook up the individual to uh, mechanical ventilation. We'll blow up our cuff. And then we could uh, put our ties on. And that would complete the procedure. So here we are with our pig model. So again, if time permits, I tend to want to draw uh, on the individual. It just gives me a little uh, better orientation. And what I'll do here is I will take my needle and I had time here to put a little uh, saline uh, into my syringe. And um, I'm going to, with my uh, counter hand here, secure um, the cricothyroid membrane. Right here, here's my uh, thyroid cartilage. 
here's my cricoid uh, cartilage, and here's my third uh, cricothyroid membrane right here. And so I am going to angle slightly down here for entry. And here I go through, and I'm looking for air bubbles. And I got the air bubbles. And the second I get the air bubbles again, I want to stop. I want to stop because I don't want to go through the posterior wall. And so I tend to have the palm of my upper hand resting on the patient if possible. And that gives me security to where I can hold the needle without it moving. And the next part then is to take my wire. So then recall here that I have two tips to the wire, the flexible tip and then the rigid tip. And I want to put the flexible tip in first. And here I am going to angle down uh, towards the feet. And then what we can see here in this particular model is it coming out. And then I'll go ahead and take my needle off. Again, this flexible tip is nice because as I advance down the bronchial tree, if I were to hit a distal portion here, it would prevent injury because the, the wire would fall upon itself. So instead of using the 15 blade, which again is round, I tend to grab for a uh, 11 blade, which is pencil tipped. And this allows me to come straight down on the wire here and create a horizontal incision, approximately one centimeter uh, big. So I'll go 0.5 centimeters to my left and then 0.5 centimeters towards me to my right. Now, in individuals that maybe are a bit bigger, perhaps maybe one additional step would be to grab a right angle if needed. And here I can come down on my wire and I could use a blunt dissection technique here to open up the space um, even more, again, if needed. Often not needed um, for individuals, but something to keep in mind. And so now keeping in mind the angle of this wire here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my airway device, which again is two devices in one. It's the inner dilator, along with the airway device that will remain in the patient. And what I wanna do here now is come down and be cognizant of the, uh, of the path of the wire and follow that path of the wire into the individual right here as I come in. Now, once I'm in here, now I can take out both my wire and my inner dilator together. I would inflate my cuff. And then after I inflate my cuff, uh, hook up the individual to mechanical ventilation. And then I could use my neckties here to, secu uh, to secure the device. And that would be the completion of the procedure. For more information, please visit our website at www.med-specialists.net. You can also find us on YouTube as Medical Specialists Associates. Thanks for listening.